Hey everybody, it's Jeff, and here's what I did today on Workbench, where I stream my open source innovation work on Twitch. Uh, fun step forward today, uh, even if there isn't a whole lot to demo. Um, I added support for pointers to other nodes uh, in the tree from any component. So in my um, uh, big project uh, UI prototype, I've got the tree view and the component thing I'll show you here. The goal is to continue borrowing this uh, node and component data model um, that uh, Unity has where you have a hierarchy of objects. The objects are kind of meaningless um, because they, besides some common data, they're just um, containers for uh, what are called components, which are basically classes. In this case, there are classes of a particular subtype, but um, you can imagine just the general idea of a component, which is maybe some data, um, maybe some data and uh, logic. But you have this inspector here. And um, in my case, uh, a component could just be any ghost struct. Um, so I'll show that. Um, but the the behavior here with pointers is um, these are references to other objects, and they can be other objects in the tree. And so the way you make those references is just drag and drop. I could grab snow and make it um, bubbles. Right now it references that, um, et cetera. And it's actually uh, going to try and uh, reference the right component type given the type of the field. Um, and of course, these, by the way, are defined by a class, and so th those are just uh, properties on on there. So uh, the maybe equivalent here is here's my demo component. It's just a struct. It's got some different types of values on it, and one of them here is uh, a node, um, which is a reference to another node in the tree. Um, to start, I'm just doing pointers to other nodes, and then I can make it look up specific components uh, later. Um, so I start out with uh, figuring out the drag and drop part. Um, we have drag and drop as a plugin for the tree to move stuff around, so I didn't have to do any of that. Um, but to sort of make that work outside of the tree, I looked up um, drag and drop stuff uh, in HTML5. It's nice that we finally have a drag and drop API in HTML5, even though I know we've had it for a bit. Um, so first I added a separate um, drag and drop demo on the page just to get used to the API, a div that I could drop on the other div. And then I had to figure out how to integrate it with um, the JS tree uh, drag and drop because that's actually a, a plugin and it turns out not to actually be implemented with HTML5 drag and drop, um, but it has an option uh, to to at least integrate with it, so it will trigger the right events and all that stuff. So from there, I was able to drag items off onto this other uh, div, and then uh, quickly kind of put together a input field um, that would get its ID. And so using using this API, you um, pass the data. The data that you're passing along is set. So um, when you have drag and drop, you just have these events. And when you start, you can kind of put in what the data is that you're going to drop. And so it can be of various types or whatever. Um, most often, it's going to be um, plain text. Um, but in theory, it could be other stuff. All this, I I feel like this was inherited from, uh, you know, the, the, it's pretty much the same API as as, as windowing systems had uh, developed um, for their object oriented drag and drop APIs. Anyway, um, so from an ID that I pass along, given the root node um, on the on the back end for these. I have a function find by ID, and so I can just uh, look up from the root node a reference to that node by its ID. Um, these are in Go. Uh, 
if you've been following along and in previous stuff so um, the problem is the root node lives in the tree view uh, UI component and so unfortunately um, and, and the thing that needs it um, is basically the property input which is in a property set which is in the inspector and the inspector is a sibling uh, to the tree view and at least for now um, when you make references that would be stored in the this component the app component um, I can't bind those uh, to a sibling so I couldn't have a reference to tree view or a reference to tree view root um, instead though I uh, passed down basically a callback that returns the root node um, and so basically yeah I just pass a callback to a, basically an indirection to the to uh, the tree view to get the root node um, that ended up working uh, from there is pretty easy um, this is the uh, how we set up a, a field uh, for a pointer. Um, when a drop event happens, um, right? I grab the node ID and I use the root node uh, reference uh, to get the actual node, uh, and then I set the field to it. And when the input renders, um, it looks up the node and grabs its friendly name. Um, to actually use as the value for this input. So it looks like this. We have my node, it's a pointer, it's read only. Um, but what I can do is I can drag one of these to it and it doesn't work. Um, I guess we already have that. So here's five. All right. Um, and so it's not just you know looking up the name of the element that it, it passed. It um, took its ID, and then in Go it looked up, used that ID to look up that node, and then set a pointer um, to this instance of demo component, component and um, set a pointer to five that node. And then re-renders, and so uh, it gets the name here. So it's kind of more complicated than it looks, but ultimately um, this is getting set to whatever uh, node I dragged onto it. One, uh, well, this gets a little bit more complicated if I do an arbitrary component, um, but the behavior is basically the same. Um, but one weird problem I ran into is I couldn't get the data out of data transfer on the drag event from Go. So uh, when you do drag events, um, like I said, you set data using this data transfer uh, property of event, um, and you get data out of it. And for some reason in Go, um, I don't know if it's like doing a shallow copy or something somewhere, or data transfer is just like really magical for some reason. Um, but I basically couldn't get any data out of it or set it in a way that would actually set the data. Um, what I was able to do as a workaround um, is create some uh, JavaScript events that would basically take that data and write it to the to a data attribute on there and then trigger another event like on change and then that would be handled by go and then it would look it up on the data set um, so I had to write those um, uh, handlers out here but I mean they're they're pretty reusable and simple and you know it's a fine simple workaround for now um, so it works, right? Um, there's a new problem, and uh, it has to do with the data serialization. So um, what happens is when we change the data is Go serializes stuff. It goes and walks a tree, and 
if it hits a pointer to another object in the tree, it doesn't really care. It just copies it by value into the serialization. So it's copying that data. There are two fives uh, serialized here now. So luckily, the solution to this is um, because we had to do some extra metadata, we had to wrap the component value um, in uh, something that stores its type, since we need to be able to look up the component, create an instance of the right type, and then deserialize or, or unmarshal into it. Um, we could just have something alongside it here that uh, stores um, the IDs of any references and the path to that reference, and then use reflection to, when we marshal that value, we walk it and look for any pointers to anything that points to the tree, puts that data in there, and when we unmarshal it, we use uh, we we do what we normally do, and then set those values by looking it up on the tree. It's, I'm worried about the now I need a reference to the tree. Um, this is going to get kind of complicated, but so that's that's a solution, um, but it's a task for another time. Anyway, that's kind of long enough. Um, I am happy though with this progress, even though it doesn't look like much. Um, you can imagine how if we were to drag the node um, that this component that owns this component, that it would get a maximum call stack exceeded because it's trying to recursively uh, serialize itself. Um, but uh, otherwise, this is this is pretty cool. This is one of the trickier ones that I thought. Um, everything else after this is like maps and slices, and those are pretty easy once you, uh, but pointers, uh, that, that was kind of difficult. So we'll see. Um, that's it for now. If you have thoughts or questions or suggestions or whatever, tell me in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to start following along, or you can join me live on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays on Twitch. Thanks for watching.